Hello, this is Chris Gannon. Um, I thought I would put a video together uh, that explained my SVG workflow because um, I've been working on it for quite a while now and uh, and I feel like I've sort of... Uh, the, tool, the SVG tooling is pretty bad, as we all know, uh, and, uh, and I've overcome some of those to some degree. Uh, I was just watching um, Dennis Gregor's visuals. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's not how you pronounce Gable or whatever his surname is, but anyway, uh, Dennis Gregor's visuals. Um, and uh, he was, uh, you know, uh, showing the bottlenecks that he's coming up against. And uh, and uh, I've maybe my my workflow um, saw some of those uh, potential issues. Anyway, so so this is how I would go about um, uh, creating uh, an SVG animation. So in Illustrator, which I use, I know not everyone does, but I do, um, uh, I have all of my assets all drawn. Uh, this um, document is 60, 600 by 600. Um, now there's a lot of sort of, there are a lot of issues surrounding, you know, positioning and that sort of thing, and one of the um, and, and maintaining a, a, a consistent position of elements. Now, one of the ways that I've managed to get around this uh, is by having a background. Usually, you start without any kind of um, background uh, graphic or whatever. I always have a background graphic that's the same size as my stage. Um, that way, uh, whenever I want to copy an element and keep um, a specific item in place, I copy the background with it and that way it keeps it in context. So if I want to change uh, the colour of the cow or, or if I want to change the position of the cow or if I want to do something to an element uh, and then I want to copy it back into um, Sublime Text which we'll move on to in a minute uh, and then into CodePen uh, then rather than sort of having to put this into a separate file or make it the same dimensions as the uh, Illustrator file, uh, I select the element I've just edited, select the background and then move all that, copy that, paste it into um, Sublime. That didn't work. <laughs> Obviously not because I'm doing a recording. Because it works all the time normally. Oh, there we go. Right, uh, yeah, and then you end up with all this like gubbins here, you know, this you know, Adobe's um, brilliant naming for, um, convention uh, but uh, there, I've, I've, there's, a, there's a way around that kind of thing as well but um, so anyway let's go through a whole work for us at flow so first of all what I would do is I would select everything that I want to um, that I want to copy into my file so select it all and copy it control C or command C or propeller C or whatever um, and paste it all in and you end up with this sort of dump of stuff um, now one of the things that many people complain about, uh, and Dennis was complaining about in that video, is uh, this underscore one crap that seems to be sort of uh, prevalent in all of them. And now, obviously, there are ways and means, and often I just do a sort of a find and replace, um, do one uh, uh, underscore one underscore, and just do a replace all to nothing. Uh, and that gets rid of everything. Uh, I also prefer as well not to have all of these uh, as IDs. I prefer them to have to have them as classes. Um, so I do uh, the same kind of same kind of thing. Um, so I go find where is it? Come on, ID equals and class equals, and then find and replace. The only problem with that, obviously, anyone anyone concentrating will notice, is that you can't reference things like gradients and uh, and various other um, uh, dynamic fills and that sort of stuff using classes. So you have to change those back to an ID, which um, I'm doing. And also, I'm going to just change that as well because I don't like that name. I'm just going to call it BG Gradient. Uh, okay, so. Um, that kind of looks a bit better already, and it hasn't taken very long. So I just select all that, copy it. Uh, I always have a, I always put my SVGs inside a container, and then use GreenSock to just center everything. Yes, you could use CSS, but I don't really know CSS very well, so I just use GreenSock uh, and just paste the whole lot in, and magically it appears uh, all centered and all nice and everything. So um, there is another way of doing it so that you don't. Um, 
have all the underscore ones, you know, all this underscore one stuff that we had, all this underscore one problem that we had in underscore two, and that is to um, do save as, and then if you do save as SVG, uh, and then you save, and then when it pops up the options box, um, just view the SVG code, and it actually comes out without any of that stuff on it which is super handy it, I mean it still comes up with this you know these um, gradient and sort of fill names as something stupid um, BG grad whatever uh, you don't have to do that and again you can just go ahead and um, change all your IDs to classes and then go back and change that back to ID because basically you, you know you can't reference it um, but apart from that um, it's maybe a bit quicker, but if you're doing a find and replace, I really find that just copying everything on the actual stage. Oh yes, the drawback of saving as SVG is that anything you'll notice that here in Illustrator I've got a hidden layer. I didn't want to put that in, but when you export as SVG, as we'll find in a minute, if I go back in here, undo that, and paste that in. Oh, hang on. What have I done? Have I not? Co what have I not copied? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It actually saves it as an entire document, so you've just actually got to copy it from just the SVG bit. You don't want all that doc type stuff, uh, and then put that in. Have I got rid of the bottom of my? What the hell's happened here? <laughs> What's going on here? SVG. Someone, somebody watching this video is going, "Oh, you idiot! You haven't done blah 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 blah." What's going on here? Is this? Is, don't tell me CodePen's having a fit. Uh, do you know what? I actually think. See, this is. A, I think this rather beautifully illustrates the whole problem with SVG tooling, is that a whole, a whole, a whole load of stuff is actually relatively unstable and not fit for um, prime time. There's a whole load of like inline stuff here as well which I don't want and and is unnecessary so do you know what we're just going to bail on this whole kind of saving as SVG I'm just showing you that because um, some people prefer that method and it, uh, it saves on this silly naming convention but with find and replace you get over it so anyway so let's go back to my this is this is not the method I use this is the method I use so I select it all copy it go into sublime text yeah and then just paste it yeah go and do them all my find and replaces underscore ones go back and find any any gradients and things id equals and then I'm just going to change that to a nicer name so we're going to call that bg grad and then copy it all and then paste it into there. Oh, and it's magically appeared. Right. Okay. We're back on track. So, um, one of the problems on the next problem people have uh, is working out or, or making sure that things are positioned correctly uh, when they actually get pasted into the um, into the SVG or into into CodePen or wherever or into your document. Um, and as I sort of alluded to earlier, um, you don't have to keep sort of you don't have to keep coming back in here and copying it back into Illustrator and you know and uh, you know if you want to change one element you can basically go into your Illustrator file and if I want to um, I don't know change all the um, change all of these lights to a different color yes you could hand code it I don't have any problem with that um, but um, just for, illust for um, illustrating sake you just want to change that all the colors to um, I don't know uh, like a bluey colour, no, greeny colour. Okay. Now you can just select that, and you select your background. Now what I tend to do is, and then copy that. And then what I tend to do is, this is my sort of my rough. I call it my sort of a scratch pad. I just get rid of all that. I don't need that. This is just my intermediate sort of um, place where I paste stuff. Pasting that in, and I don't need any of this stuff. I don't need this background stuff and I don't need that because it's already in there. All I want is this light group. Uh, and in fact, I don't even need the the grouping thing. I don't even need to change that. All I need are all the circles inside. So I just copy the circles, 
Go into Code Pen. Go and find them in here. Where are they? They'll be down. Where are they? Here they are. Select them. Paste over. Magic. Oh, I've missed off these two here, but that's my fault for not selecting them in Illustri Illustrator. And that, uh, do you know why, actually? is because they're behind uh, the UFO. That's why they're actually in a different group. But um, that method basically allows you to maintain positioning um, inside your SVG document. And I'll just illustrate that again by... Um, uh, oh, yeah, so I've got a little alien. I want, I want, I've want. i got this little alien here, look. Yeah. There he is, and I want to put him in there. Um, if you don't use this technique, it can be really hard to position this this bad boy. There he is. Um, so basically, again, you just select him. You select your background, so you've got which is the same dimensions as your SVG document. Copy. Go into your scratch pad. Select all. Get rid of all that. Paste it in, and there you are. You there's there's your alien. That's all you need. That's all you need and then you get rid of and then I'm just I'm gonna run my underscore one stuff and I'll run my ID class. Yeah, don't need anything else, just copy that alien. Copy and he will come in or she will come in in the right place. I need to just look under the and make sure I paste it underneath the I think it's called cockpit. Uh let's have a look, where is it? Where's a cockpit? Where are you? cockpit there you go so let's just put him behind there put him behind the glass paste and he magically appears there he is so that's um, the way I make sure that things are positioned another I don't know if it's a if it's a uh, it's a it, well it's just a thing basically that I find very useful uh, some people may not find it very useful but I do uh, and that is when you're animating stuff with green sock the position that the elements start off at in the page, so at the moment the alien, you would think that the alien is actually sitting at an X position of like 300 and a Y position of, I don't know, 270 or something like that. But actually, with green, if you use Greensock, if I, if I animate um, the alien to X is 20, he'll go 20 pixels that way and if I do you know a Y position of minus 50 he'll go 50 away from his original position so every position of that these graphical elements sit in is their zero position according to a green sock which I find incredibly useful um, once you understand it and get your head around it um, there are ways and means around that if you don't like that and that is to um, uh, go into your uh, Illustrator document and put everything at zero zero so there's a whole sort of mess of graphics all in the top left hand corner you copy all that you paste it into your scratch pad you then clear it all up or whatever clean it all up and then bung it into code pen and then you use green sock or whatever you want uh, to position it um, the way that um, you know you um, you know relative to zero zero at the top left Obviously, that only works for paths, uh, so paths like this, uh, path data. Obviously, um, with, or maybe not obviously, but with circles and lines and ellipses and all that sort of thing, uh, all of those are using um, absolute values. Um, so, you know, this circle, what's this? I think this is, um, what's that? Let's, let's, let's see what that is. If I change that to 20, what moves? Oh, it's a light. There you go. Um, so actually, these it doesn't work with these because um, it's not a it's not a sort of a compound path. It's actually a proper. It's a, like a native uh, well, native tag or whatever that has absolute positioning applied to it. Whereas um, if you want to animate a path, um, then its position, as far as green socks concerned, is zero zero when you paste it in. Uh, and let's just let's just sort of demonstrate that. So if I just do tween max dot two, I usually would create a reference to this, but I'm going to call it dot alien. Oops, three, uh, and I just do x. If I just do it to fifty, 
there you go, he just moves to 50 from his original position, um, which is essentially zero. So if I just do, if I go, um, you know, uh, minus equal 100, it will just go back, it will just go left by 100. So um, paths, uh, complex paths, you know, specifically um, uh, not not ellipses or lines or anything like that, are always at zero zero, um, which is very handy. Anyway, um, uh, I hope you found this enlightening or useful. Um, some of it, maybe none of it. Um, and um, oh, and don't forget as well, if you don't actually want a background, um, for example, let me just create a new document. Uh, if you, I always basically when I create when I create a new um, uh, a new project, um, always always put in the background, and I use this as I s said before as my little as as my sort of um, the thing that I always copy with. So if I you know make sort of um, you know make some shapes, and uh, I'm just going to draw something terrible now. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, well, Draw like a funny little box face, um, uh, and that way, if I want, if I, def if I definitely want him sitting there at that po at that position, I just copy him. I copy all those bits. In fact, I might, gr I would probably group that, copy that, and copy the background. Copy, go into my scratch pad, paste it in, and then what you can do is just delete the rectangle if you don't want it. And then just copy everything else, and then just um, you know bung that into um, get rid of all that. Come on! In fact, this is probably going to break now because over here is re referencing something that it doesn't exist. Oh, there you go. Um, and just to show that that actually is correctly seated, if I just copy that and just bung that, bung that in, you'll see that they are the same in the same position. Anyway, I uh, hope you found that useful and um, I will see you again. Cheers!